What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and this is so exciting for me because, you know, I'm very into real estate. Um, Egypt Sherrod is here, and Mike Jackson is here, a.k.a. DJ Fadolf. Hey, can what's up, y'all? Can I still up, call y'all? you that? You no. can still call me that. Okay. The turntable's still there. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you guys have the show Married to Real Estate. Congratulations. The third season is about to start. Mm-hmm. Thank you. And that is a big yep. deal. And I love watching HGTV shows because I do love also, similar to Egypt, you know, and to Mike, t- real estate. Mm-hmm. And also, like, the whole design aspect. And right now, I'm in the middle of gut renovating a brownstone in Brooklyn. Oh, nice. And so I know nice. how difficult it is when, you know, you're trying to do that work for yourself. But what's great is when you're helping other people who need it. Mm-hmm. Agreed. That's big why I was, I was really loving the project I saw on social media you're doing in Detroit. Oh, yeah. I thought that was huge because not only are you trying to address the affordable housing issue, you're trying to do something for women, but you're showing other women, guess what? We could do this together. We, we yep. could be strong on our own, but mm-hmm. we could be stronger together. So kudos to you for everything yeah. you're doing and using your platform. Well, thank mm-hmm. you. It is important to me because, like I told you, you know, right before this interview mm-hmm. started, I do want to make sure that with gentrification and people getting pushed out of Midtown, mm-hmm. that we're bringing something that's beautiful. Um, because sometimes, even with affordable housing, we want to make sure it's still beautiful Mm -hmm. and so you know we don't want it to be like somebody's just trying to get a quick check we really do care so what you're saying is you want us to come in and design it i need some help (laughs) (laughs) i would listen look that sounds like sounds like a (laughs) spinoff <laughs> but you know, also in Egypt, I've always felt like to me, I love how you flip from like being in radio to doing what you do. It feels like, first of all, I've always admired you from when you are a radio personality. You know, that's when I was first introduced to you. Mm-hmm. But seeing how you've evolved in your career, and it seems like you love what you do right now. Both mm-hmm. of you, yeah. just being able to be together. He's working as a contractor and a builder. Mm-hmm. You're a realtor. Both of you, you know, doing the work yep. that you do in Atlanta. Yes. It's very yeah. admirable. But, but it, it started in New York. Yep. Yeah. You it know, sure it, did. it did. It started when I was a radio personality in New York City, making a crazy low amount of money. Therefore, I had to work like two and three jobs. Mm. One was as a real estate agent, then became a broker, but then being an investor. And that's kind of what saved me. Sometimes we have to work work a job while we build our career. So right. for me, radio was actually the job. And I know to some people that's the dream job, mm-hmm. but it was the safety net. It was, you know, my yeah. benefits while I actually built my career in, in this real estate empire we mm-hmm. have together. But he was um, working on the houses I was flipping. Mm-hmm. And we, right. fell, we fell in love over black mold. <laughs> you like, first of all, right. <laughs> He's bringing something to the table. Exactly. He's bringing a lot. Exactly. He's bringing a lot to the table. <laughs> black mold is so disgusting, too. So kudos to you for that. No, but honestly, because people will think, you know, and uh, for you, Mike, as a DJ also, we know Mm -hmm. you in that capacity. Um, People think when you have these types of jobs that you're rich. They hear you on the radio every day and Mm -hmm. they're like, oh, you know, she's got it. Mm -hmm. And they're not understanding that sometimes you do have to have multiple streams of income. And I think that's a lot more popular now than it used to be. Well, we didn't have social media, Mm -hmm. you know, back when I was starting. I think that, you know, many people, we were starting behind. You guys are at least starting at go because every time you pick up the phone, you're getting some kind of wealth advice or smart life advice on what to do. But back then it was like, figure it out, Mm -hmm. you know, build your grit. My first radio job, I was making $19,000 a year. By the time I got to New York (laughs) City and I I literally, my face was on billboards in New York and I was making $56,000 a year. And people thought, and I was catching they, the yeah. train. I was rubbing nickels together. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I was like, how do people live in New York City right. like this? $56,000. And by the time I was at the top of my game, I think I had just made 200000 working three jobs. Damn. See, my first radio job, I was making $50,000 a year so I'll never forget that but I will say like the second year I went in and I was like all right well I you know did what I had to do the first year and I did get um I did get a a good raise Mm -hmm. when I did that but it was like every year I was going in and asking for it did you ever go in and say look I need a raise or okay so yes (laughs) I did I don't say women don't do that as much as men do I did I was reading my Yana Banzan and (laughs) I read an article, that's what made me do it, okay? And I was like, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. Here's my speech, and I practiced. And I walked in, and I, you know, told why, laid down my rating, showed, um, you know, why I should get a raise and be paid the same as my counterparts. Mm -hmm. And a week later, I was fired. (gasps) 
You I won't even lying. say which station right now. You don't have to. I know. We are, but but a week later, <laughs> I was I was because I never knew what happened. I was like, oh, there was a which station, but there was a lot that happened back right. then. But yeah. that that was one of them. And I found myself on the unemployment line, and you know, at that time, they're like, the max is four hundred five dollars a week. What you gonna do with four hundred five dollars? Mm-hmm. You know, a week. And just then, a billboard with a taxi cab was rolling by. You know how they have the little triangulars yeah. on the top, and it was of me on my radio show. And I said, God, please don't let it stop here. Please don't let it stop. It stopped right next to me. And I said, okay, you're trying to tell me something, right? By the time I got to the front of the line, I realized that the message was, you will never find yourself on the unemployment line again. Mm. You can never put your destiny, financial or otherwise, in somebody else's hands. It's got to be about ownership. It's yes. got about. It's got to be about creating your own platform. So... Real estate then became a not just a job or a career or, you know, real estate literally became my culture. <laughs> it became the blood that ran through my veins because that gave me an opportunity to have ownership. On one flip house, I made 225000 That's that was, right. That was more <laughs> than I made in like two years on radio. Yeah. <laughs> and listen, I got my real estate license recently, too. And Oh, congratulations. Which, thank you. What? Which That's I'm huge. very excited about. Because How many times did you take the test? Once. Once? Oh. Yeah. I got it the first time. She's smart, smart. (laughs) I ain't going to lie. That test hard. I studied so hard because people kept telling me, you're not going to pass on the first time. And everyone kept saying that to me. So I was taking all these practice tests like Uh on on YouTube and everything. And I did the online classes. I didn't go in person. And so when I went in, I left and I was like, I'm not too sure what happened. But I I did pass on the first time. Well, most people take it three times before they pass. So you should feel good. Yeah, for real. Oh, good. Something three, four, five. And I won't lie. We we weren't talking about you, Mike. Oh, <laughs> uh, see what had happened was I had to convince him some years but ago. But look, at like, least I got, go back in. I got he it. I got it. He did. He went and got it. Shoot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah, so now let's pivot to everything that you guys have going on right now. We're married to real estate, um, and this show actually started. Was it during the pandemic or right? It was during the pandemic mm-hmm. when everybody was stuck in the house. Mike just started filming us in our business. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we were teaching the kids at the kitchen countertop and running our businesses from the dining room table. And he just started filming. We went back when the world started to open up, and I said, "Mike, I think there's a show here." Mm-hmm. So we edited it together, a sizzle reel. Took it over, pitched it to HGTV, mm-hmm. who I was with already, and they loved it. Right. So then we partnered up with um, 51 Minds. At the time, they were doing T.I. and Tiny's Family Hustle, but we mm-hmm. were like, okay, they get black people. <laughs> they get the black <laughs> family. <that. laughs> They're not going to want us to change up anything. Mm-hmm. You know, th- they'll get us. And they really did in a big way. It comes across really authentic. So, right. yeah, it started with his cell phone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And now, what, 19 million viewers later, mm-hmm. here we are. And I think it also is... HGTV loves you like just seeing the things that you guys have done already and he was always in the background even when you were in the forefront Mm -hmm. just actually supporting what it is that you do making sure everything got done right Right. too which is really helpful I had no problem with it well yeah so let me throw this up here's my confession Angela he was doing all the work and I was looking like I did it on camera that's what I'm talking about (laughs) (laughs) that's how smart people work now (laughs) And, and, but a few times, I told our old production company, I said, y'all need to just turn the camera around. Uh-huh. The real show is what's happening back here. Yeah. And and they wouldn't. But, you know, everything has its time. And people need to see that. And it's also nice to see you have three daughters mm-hmm. to see you guys interact with them. I saw on um, the episode where she was going to the dentist for the first time. Oh, you give, you giving the inside school because that's season three. Yeah. So yeah. that's the, the yeah. I did get a little bit of a snippet uh-huh. of what's about to happen. But it's just really cute to see you your uh, interactions as a girl dad Mm -hmm. and being in a house with four women. You know what? I wouldn't have it any other way, though. I mean, sometimes they can drive me crazy on a Monday, but I wouldn't have have it any other way. Okay. (laughs) Got to at least, right? Somebody to talk to. (laughs) No, seriously, I do not mind it, Angela. When I tell you I wouldn't have it any other way, I solely mean that I get to be authentically me in every facet, Mm -hmm. emotionally, you know, um, Physically, I am there. And I tell fellows all the time, loving them more doesn't make you any less of a man. Right. Because a lot of dudes feel like, oh, I got girls. I, I got. I can't be hard. You don't have to be. You feel mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, you can be as corny as you want, cliche as you want, you know, as mushy as you want, and still but, be a man. Why do, di- why do guys feel like they can't be like that with their sons, though? Like what? The same way. You know, if you can be mushy with your daughter and you can be loving and affectionate with your daughter, I just think a lot of guys think it's different I don't want him to be soft. Sons. I got to make sure he but, knows what the real that's, world. That's, that's false because you can be. You can mm-hmm. teach them both aspects. 
Right. You know what I mean? Let me ask you this. So when everything was like when you were leaving New York, were you and Mike together already? Cause... We've been together 19 years. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so, yeah. So what what was that like and how did the relationship kind of, because that's a difficult time too mm-hmm. when you're like, I don't have this job anymore. Sometimes even for your self-esteem because you been, had been doing that and that's how people knew you. That can be hard even carrying over to your relationship. So, mm-hmm. so actually that's not why I left New York because um, when I lost that first job, I went to real estate mm-hmm. and I was making more in real estate than I'd ever made in my life. And I became rookie of the year and then I got my broker's license and I really built myself up. Mm-hmm. So when I got the call to go back to radio here in New York at another station, my first answer was no, because I, I know what that's gonna look like. But then I got smart and said, well, I can actually look at this like a four hour commercial for my business. Yes. If I go back, they'll pay me, but then I get to integrate real estate and balance both because I'll never make that mistake again of not having my own. And that's what I did. I went back to radio here for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. But when I got pregnant with our first child, and and I say this because you don't have children yet, right? right? Um, What a lot of people also didn't realize is that in entertainment, at least here, we were guarded by a union. And when I got pregnant, I thought I had health insurance either through the radio station or through the union because I was paying dues mm-hmm. and I was working. Right. And when I got ready to go out, not one of them was paying my health insurance for, for me to deliver my child. What? Mm-hmm. And that is when I quit radio and left. And oh I, I left New York. Yeah. I was done. I was done. I did not know that. <laughs> so you mean to tell me all these years working I've been paying and paying all these dues. and everybody's pointing fingers about who's going to pay my hospital bills when I when it's time to deliver mm-hmm. my baby. You were like, I'm done. Done. Yeah. 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 No, and listen, real estate is, I think, all about trust. Like I was saying, I just got my license, and I've been doing a lot of stuff in this space. The reason, I didn't even intend to get my license. I basically, during the pandemic, was like, I'm going to take these um, classes, just because I felt like, because I've been purchasing things, we talked about the building, I have some other properties, I have have, um, two brownstones, I have a condo in Williamsburg. I just did something in Miami. And then I have a Airbnb upstate New York. Mm-hmm. And I have another house in Detroit. And I flipped some stuff in Detroit, too. Nice. And I Angela was like, got houses, y'all. <laughs> Investment. <laughs> she got houses. Yes. What got I said to myself nets. was, I should go ahead and get mm-hmm. my license. Well, first I said I should take the classes mm-hmm. just because I wanted to learn more. Because I never wanted to... Um, be in a situation where I'm talking about things and doing things, but mm-hmm. don't know all the ins and outs. Because mm-hmm. some of that stuff is very unglamorous. Right. It's nice it to is. go show a house and, and see, oh, this room has yeah. this, and here's the split system and the floor. But it's way different when there's a lot of ins and outs and really meticulous mm-hmm. details. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, well, let me learn those things so I never feel like I don't know what I'm talking about. And then I was like, I might as well just go ahead and take the test. That's exactly what happened with mm-hmm. me when mm-hmm. I started as an investor. And I saw some of the checks the real estate agents were getting. And I said, wait a minute. Yeah. Wait a minute. There's some money being left on this table. Yeah, because it's illegal to get paid from real estate unless you're licensed. Unless so you're even licensed. if you do exactly. a referral, mm-hmm. you can't get mm-hmm. anything from that legally. Nope. What I what I love, though, is actually seeing other women from entertainment be about their business. Mm-hmm. Seeing you really be about your business while you have this platform, I love it. Mm-hmm. You know, there are many people who tell me, Egypt, you inspired me to get into real estate or you inspired me to do X, Y, and Z. Z but you're inspiring this new generation of people, and I think it's incredible. Incredible. That's time. what we should be using our platform. Yeah, and for. you also have a furniture line, which yeah. I think is amazing because I feel like that is a, a natural progression for you. So can we talk about that for a second? Please, look, I'm not going to stop you. <laughs> yes, please do. Yeah, because I love furniture shopping. Furniture but, and wallpaper. Yeah, but, oh, and, well, okay, mm-hmm. you know what? I'm going to buy some wallpaper. And a real estate brokerage and a design firm. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's all called Indigo Road. So uh, I used to, for 20 years, I owned Egypt Sherrod Real Estate and Design Group. He owned Jackson Draper construction Mm -hmm. and we would work together but it never hit us to just bring the companies together as one and build a legacy company so that's what we decided to do we opened our offices in Atlanta we're going to be opening Mm -hmm. two in Texas as well Mm. Indigo Road Real Estate Brokerage Indigo Road Realty.com Design Group we got a whole virtual design department Um, we're going to be doing some some very big projects for some celebrities you'll be seeing soon (laughs) and um, and then construction of course and the furniture line which is available or sold out now on Wayfair. <laughs> yeah, it's, yep. that's great because, and, and I want to know what inspired you to do that because I will say as I shop for furniture, sometimes it's hard to find things that doesn't look very like um, old fashioned or, you know, so I'm always like, man, I want to see. And so I like what you have. 
or had Thank available. You. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'll be sending you some. But, <laughs> but you had, because it's all sold out. <laughs> so, so here's the deal. As a mom, like three kids, and our youngest is four, our eldest is 22. Mm-hmm. So as a mom, I wake up with this list of things that I want to do for myself every day. I told my husband this. And by the end of the day, I felt like I wasn't accomplishing any of them because it's like, Mom, I need this and this, and then clients need this, my husband needs this. He mm-hmm. wants me to hang from the chandeliers. And, <laughs> you know, and then in the end of the day, it's only the same. <laughs> Why did he toast to that? <laughs> it's only the same 24 We need hours. a strong chandelier. I got so. it up there hard enough. <laughs> he, he put a brace. <laughs> <laughs> But but I told him, I said, 2023 is like my year of attacking my bucket list, everything I wanted to do for myself. If 2023 closes and I didn't do all of this, mm-hmm. then I'm going to feel like I failed, mm-hmm. you know. And so he could have been selfish and said, well, what about me, too? And he said, no, this is your year. Whatever you want to do, I'm going to get behind it. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. You want wallpaper, you want furniture, whatever. So I, he let me travel. He let me do the meetings. And he mm-hmm. was doing hair, as y'all saw on social media. <laughs> he was cornrowing. He did a good job. <laughs> Oh, my, my head game is mean. Yeah, it could be a future in it. <laughs> it was a little big where he should have said, but, you know, it's fine. <laughs> uh, and, Mike, for you as a contractor, you know, I also feel like it's really hard to get good people to come in and do the work on home. So you grew yeah. up with your family kind mm-hmm. of knowing how to do that type of work, right? Yeah, I was got into the business with my uncle and my grandfather. They had their own business, and mm-hmm. they would always tag me along and show me the ropes, right? Um, but at that time, I wasn't supposed to be there. Because when you're working on construction sites, it's 16 and then it's 18 to actually do physical labor. Okay. Right. But I was there 12 years old, 13 year old. So I saw the ins and outs. Um, And then later on in life as an adult, you know, I started working here in New York City with local 28 sheet metal workers, which is duct work, anything metal. That was us. And became a journeys man, which is the top of the tier within the trade. Um, And then formed my business and then took it to Atlanta and Jackson Draper Renovations. We've been knocking it out ever since. People don't understand being able to have those skills is Life saving. Oh like, my God. if there's certain things it. you could do in your home on your own, you know how much money that saves you. When I think about how much I've been yeah. spending on things, <laughs> and even knowing what you're supposed to spend on things, because let, they'll tell you anything. Let me tell you something. That's when I realized he was my husband mm-hmm. because <laughs> I, I met him in the nightclubs DJing. You know, I saw him at the Puerto Rican Day Parade on the float and the whole thing. We flirted, but I would never get with him because to me, he was just an industry guy. Right. right. It wasn't until I called my mentor, Ulysses, and said, I need you to send a team over to this house. I had to just fire the other one. He showed up. I said, like, I need I a contractor, <laughs> not a DJ. But when I saw him working. I need a contractor, not a DJ. But when wow. I, I didn't know, you know, and I saw him working with his hands and, it, you know, I was like, oh, my God, that's so sexy. <gasps> He's so sexy. <laughs> and did you get a discount at least? Did you get a discount? Ah, no, I get it free. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, the value in that. Oh, get you a man that can fix something. Get right. you a man that knows a trade and knows a skill. Mm-hmm. These ladies, 55 and older, really. You understand the value of that. We go to visit our oh, aunts, God. you know, down. Go. Everybody lives in Florida. You know, if they're over 55, they live in Florida. We go down and visit all the family down there. And the minute we hit this community, all the old ladies come up to him. They got their legs wrapped around him. They're rubbing his head. They give me their cameras and want me to videotape it. And then they're like, can I just borrow him? I got like 10 things that need to be fixed in my house. Say them and like they're $50, hot and <laughs> Safe to say we don't go to Florida now. <laughs> He got a Golden Girl fan club. But you know, it is amazing to see you guys helping people get their dream homes Mm -hmm. because it's also not easy to find a realtor you can trust. I remember buying my first ever house Mm -hmm. in Brooklyn and having multiple realtors until I found one who I was comfortable with. Mm -hmm. And that is a real relationship where somebody's not just trying to sell you anything, Mm -hmm. but they're also trying to make sure it's the right situation and advocating for you and not just trying to get that check. Listen, I say vet your realtor the same way you would vet somebody who is going to watch your child Mm -hmm. if you're not just going to leave your kids with anybody they've got to be somebody who's skilled uh who knows their profession who you can trust who you've done a background check on do the same thing with someone who's going to represent you on quite possibly the largest purchase in your life right right so do that diligence and then let them then let them do what they do trust them to be the quarterback of your real estate dream team that's the other part well go get your own license Oh, yeah, that's okay. Hey. Um, and it's also important for people to have options. And I love how you present like, okay, so I know you wanted this, 
But here's this. But here's another option Mm -hmm. that might be, you know, I'm going to let you decide. I'm not going to push you any which way. And I think that's important where you're not just saying, here's this. But it shows that you do your work when you're like, all right, here's the different things. Here's what this could look like. How about we try this? Now, this will cost this, but we can stay within your budget if we do it this way. You know, I think that's really important for people to also understand um, that because a lot of times when we go into and I just think of myself when I was a newbie not knowing anything and how you have to really have that trust in somebody that they're doing all this work for you to just make your life simpler. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, but but it's just learning your client. That's that mm-hmm. process. Yes, is really understanding what it is that they need and sometimes what our clients think they need is not really. For instance, um, had a woman a client recently almost 60 years old, going into a new chapter of her life, and she wanted to move. She hadn't even thought about a townhouse. But my thing is, you say you want to travel, you say you don't want house maintenance, they got townhouses with elevators. You can live here too. (laughs) You know, just come look at it. And it was perfect for her. But really assessing not just what the client says, but where are they at every chapter in their life and what is going to be best for them and show them. Show them the options. But you said you just got your license. My question for you is, (laughs) what the plan is it just to you know buy your own properties and be able to keep those checks which is smart or are you thinking you're going to represent clients as well i do want to represent clients Mm -hmm. because yeah i do and i actually have already signed on to an agency which i haven't i'm sir hand okay okay yeah so i did just (laughs) wait all right we'll talk about it but um no i'm not i'm just I'm saying, you know, if you want to be with with a minority owned, a former radio personality who understands your plight. No, I'm joking. But I'm joking. I, what, he's my, great. No, but he's my, really great. My I know plan Ryan. is really to mm-hmm. to learn a lot more, and I do mm-hmm. want to do that. Like my family has some um, properties after my grandparents passed that mm-hmm. they want to. So I'm going to represent okay. them on that. Mm-hmm. And they had a difficult time trying to find somebody that they trusted because you know, for some people, when things like that happen mm-hmm. and it involves multiple people, just finding the right person that you can trust even to sell your property you know it's not easy to make sure that it's Mm -hmm. priced right and to even know that you know those percentages are negotiable Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) so she's listening to her she put her real she knows you remind me of my I swear to you remind me of myself like 20 years ago on the radio doing just this she's being strategic she's trying to walk out of here with an HGTV show (laughs) let's be clear (laughs) that Angela Yee (laughs) is not playing games but I also feel like you know markets are so like Atlanta is on fire, right? Yes. And so yes. I know it was really tough even for people to get homes. I've seen people who are putting in uh, offers for homes and going through so and losing their homes yeah. at the like not even getting to buy it even though the offer was accepted. Mm-hmm. You know, so it is such a competitive market. So for you guys uh, trying to make sure that you are representing your clients and getting them what they need, sometimes that could be heartbreaking when you're like, I'm trying to get this deal. I mean, you know, I never want clients to overpay for, right. for anything, but the market is going to always always dictate to us what something is worth Mm -hmm. how how much is a person willing to pay and if you got 20 people overbidden for it then that is what the market is saying that it's that it's worth right Mm -hmm. now but over the last two years yeah it's been a shortage shortage of housing inventory yes specifically in the southeast region but Across the nation, that's what we've been experiencing. The, the, they couldn't keep up, you know, with the building demands. Those two years where COVID set us back with materials co- just being stuck on the seas. Yeah, so we're still, playing, we're still <laughs> playing catch up for it. But what else you want to talk no, about other that, than real estate, but Angela? But that pandemic, like, Look, really... we're married to real estate, but we, we can talk about other things okay, in real estate. Good. What you want to no, talk about? I was going to say, but that <laughs> pandemic really made that real estate in Atlanta go up through the roof. Well, okay, like, so, yeah. so one of, one of our there. properties has had more than doubled right Mm -hmm. in in 15 months it's more than doubled because of that wow yeah that's a great feeling you know what i did for the first time i did a Mm pre-construction um purchase and I, the the building's not even done yet, and it's already worth like double what I paid for Mm -hmm. it for pre pre construction. Buy land, not pocketbooks. (laughs) <laughs> well, okay, farmland so farmland because remember too. cardi b said she'd rather have a burkin and some property sometimes and she did say that and i'm gonna tell and you what i understood from that though because i will say this like 
another side that we don't, because real estate is great when the investment's good, mm-hmm. whatever. But mm-hmm. when you have tenants who aren't paying, when you have to evict people, and that's such a long process. She was basically saying, I'd rather not, the not have to so, deal with so that. So I have to deal with the headache. But there's so many, you know, I think that people are being, they're very one dimensional about how you think that you can earn money off mm-hmm. of real estate. I mean, really? What's being overlooked is the fact that you can just rent out a piece of your land and allow a tower to be put up or mm-hmm. allow billboards to be erected, yep. mm-hmm. you know, and, and get 10000 to 20000 thousand dollars a month off of just allowing that on a piece of your property mm-hmm. that doesn't include what you could actually rent the house for or depending upon what type of land it is what you could lease the land for mm-hmm. you know so i mean there's so many opportunities to make yeah. money that yes. are being overlooked yep. but mark mark this day in this moment when i'm saying this the real money to be made is going to be an agricultural land okay mm. that's just the direction that's the wave right now get some farmland sit on it i don't care if you put tents on it i don't care <laughs> right, if you let right. people have <laughs> retreats and Kumbaya on it. Get some farmland. I feel you on that. Now, I want to ask you, since you said we could talk about other things. Yeah. You know, other than real estate. So, <laughs> do you could you ever see yourself coming back to radio? Or do you feel no. like there's a permanent bad taste in your mouth? No, no, no. Not okay. a bad taste. Let me tell you something. I was a radio host for 20 years. Yes, you were. And, and it was an incredible experience. It was just a chapter in my life that I was done with. I felt like I had done all I can do. Right. Um, I wanted to say more than I could say. There I were podcasts you. at that moment. <laughs> you know, I wanted to say more than what I could in 30 seconds in between songs. Right. But mm-hmm. also, um, there was a lot of pain tied to that radio journey for me. Mike mm-hmm. knows he was there yeah. with me, you know, along the way. Hopefully, you know what I'm saying yeah, when, I I, when I'm I being understand. dead on that as a woman, often in the entertainment mm-hmm. business, we can be dragged. Yeah, you know? absolutely. And with social media, it's not any better right now. It's even right. worse. But, social but, media but yeah, but even I'm behind the scenes, it is not easy. And mm-hmm. I think sometimes people just don't understand it if you're not in it. And yeah. Well, no, <laughs> let's let's just <laughs> <laughs> One second. Let, let's just speak to it because I think that we we have to, right? Mm-hmm. Anything I know about you, your career, your show is that you you're very honest. You ask the straightforward questions. Yes. The reality is that often women in entertainment we have been minimized to boobs that laugh. Right. <laughs> okay. And when you want to grow and you got something substantial to say, and you, when, he's oh, like, boob, no, as, not, as yeah. my shirt busts yeah. open, I say we have been minimized <laughs> to. Um, thank you, baby. But. <laughs> But, you know, so so when you get to a place where you feel and and listen, in anything that we do, there's going to be a season. You got to recognize what season you're in. Mm -hmm. And as the season turns, Mm -hmm. so do you. And so I recognize that in that season of my life, it was time to turn. It just was nothing left for me. I am grateful for it. But there's nothing left that I can do that I can't do on my own social media channels. Mm -hmm. And I also feel like, you know, just even mental health was not a big conversation uh, back then like it is now. But even mentally, you have to feel like. Sometimes you're supposed to feel like this is the best opportunity in the world and how could you, you know, not want to do this? Mm -hmm. But then mentally it can be so draining that you're like, I would much rather do anything else. Well, I don't I don't I don't think people understand how mentally taxing it is to entertain. Mm -hmm. Comedians will tell you, you know, you you kind of look at the stats. A lot of comedians who have mental health issues, too. Mm -hmm. And I was listening to um, Wanda Sykes even talk about it to entertain. You're giving more than just physically being there. You're giving your spirit. You're giving your personal journey. You're just you're giving it all. It is like working 12 hours a day, even right. if you're only on stage for an hour. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, sometimes you would rather just, you know what, let me go get a day job. <laughs> I mean, but, Angela, it falls into the place of where I say all the time the three biggest things in life, or should I say keys, is health, happiness, and peace. Because mm-hmm. if you take those out of any situation, everything else becomes mundane. Mm-hmm. You can have all the money in the world, but if you're not happy, it won't matter, right? Have all the materials in the world, but if your health is fleeting, right. it doesn't matter. So your health, happiness, and peace are your top goals in it all. He's sexy, isn't he? <laughs> I love him. I love that for you. I love that for both of you, though, because I definitely, like you said, you've been you had did radio for twenty years, and you're somebody I've always I paid attention to. I'm, I'm, I, I like it's crazy that we're just meeting. I know, and I feel, we follow each other. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Every time you do something, I'll report on it, and you know, for me, it's always like. Because I'm in radio, I've heard stories about things that have happened. Mm-hmm. I've seen things mm-hmm. that you've said, mm-hmm. you know, about your experience and your journey. And I'm happy to see the space that you're in now. Thank you. Mm-hmm. You know, because I feel like I look to you as somebody, when it came to me wanting to do real estate, you're the person that I'm like, okay, I kind of want to follow that path. Right. 
you know, that Egypt has. I still enjoy doing radio and I'm, you know, very excited to have my own show and mm -hmm. start this journey and I'm working really hard on it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. But I also feel like, like you said, thank goodness we have other things mm -hmm. because I never want to feel like I need to have this or I don't have anything. I've right. always wanted to make sure I establish mm -hmm. myself in other ways so that I'm doing this just because I want to, not because mm -hmm. I have to. I had an opportunity uh, to interview Oprah Winfrey and I asked her for her advice some, some years ago. And I just said, like, how do I break through? What's the breakthrough moment? And um, I never forget she told me, number one, find what you are passionate, truly passionate about, and go hard in the paint for it. But then additionally... Um, Oprah said go hard in the paint? She said go hard in the paint. <laughs> you better ask Oprah in all her purple today. She, she told me essentially go hard in the paint. Okay. It, right? Um, but but you got to find what you are authentically good at and authentically passionate about. And if you're not passionate about something anymore, it's going to show. Right? And I felt like that for that career with me. You know, it was going to show. But... Um, I forgot. See, you interrupted me. You know I'm over 40 now. I can't hold the thought. You better go hard. You got to go hard in the paint. <laughs> I got to go Look, hard Look, stop playing. <laughs> oh, we're talking about not having to do something. Did she tell you to sign, the to she tell you to sign your own checks? Yeah, she told me to sign. Yeah, that's She did say sign your own checks. She told me to sign my own. See, you messed me. Never mind. Go ahead, Angela. What you want? No, but we were talking about um, basically doing something because you want to, not because you have to. That's not what we were talking about. What I was going to say was really good, and I lost the thought. There's some advice Oprah gave you. He knows me by now. He knows if you interrupt me. <laughs> you lose your whole train of thought. <laughs> It was good. But listen, because it, it, it feels amazing. You mm -hmm. have your husband mm -hmm. on your journey. Both mm -hmm. of you yeah. enjoy actually working with each mm -hmm. other. What's your, Sometimes. What's your rules for when you guys <laughs> clash? Like, do you have rules on how to handle it? Like, I know he doesn't like to um, talk right when the midst of it. Like, what are the rules for when you guys don't agree? Rules for when we don't agree. Well, uh, one, never get disrespectful towards each other, right? Okay. That's a definite, no matter what it is, I won't disrespect her, mm -hmm. and vice versa. Um, two, no need to yell at each other, mm -hmm. right? Raise the conversation, not our voice. Um, and three, I pull her into a closet and just start kissing all over. <laughs> and and just say, my hush your mouth. <laughs> That's how he disarms me. Like if I just if I'm having a moment, like you know, we we do on set sometimes, and obviously in our businesses, you know, we have disagreements. And for the first time a couple of weeks ago, I was upset with him and my uncle, and I was like, I quit. He's uh, like, you can't quit your own business. Yeah. I said, I quit. He you said, can you fire can't, us. You can't, quit the, you can't quit the show. You can't quit. I said, I quit everybody. I'm done. I mean, it lasted like five minutes. So I came uh -huh. back. But, <laughs> but that's how he disarms me. He let me just go, go, go. And then he grabs me. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> you got it. You win. You win. I mean, it's just, it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. It's just real. 19 years. Mm -hmm. We would be fake if we sat here yeah, in front then, of you listen, acting I, like we don't have disagreements. I always right. feel like in relationships, it's important to know how to argue because you're going to like right. there's no way you don't there's mm -hmm. no way because then somebody doesn't care if you're right. not you know passionately disagreeing on things you can't bring up old stuff okay that's the thing mm -hmm. you know if you've worked through it already we we talked through it we you know dissected it and decided that we were past it in the midst of that argument, you cannot bring up what right. I did 10 <laughs> years ago. That's fighting dirty, yeah, right? It is. Yeah. It's past. We move past it. Sometimes you got to choose your battles, too. You mm -hmm. know, um, if it really isn't a big deal, just hear the person out, right? Don't listen to debate. Listen to actually hear what they're saying. Because sometimes we're really listening like, all right, as soon as she finishes, I'm getting her right, right now. You're not even paying Don't attention. Don't do that. Because otherwise, it's just going to blow up and continue over and over. And settle it right there in the moment versus trying to carry it on throughout the week. That's one of our biggest things, especially for me. So, you know, we'll get into it and I'm like, all right, it's Tuesday. Wednesday, I'm still mad at you. Thursday, I'm still mad at you. Friday, I'm still mad at you. <laughs> Had to get better at that, you know? And I think, you know, he told me something one time and it, it really struck me because it was so true. And he said to me, babe, sometimes it's the way you say it. It's not what you're saying. Mm -hmm. It's the way you say it. It comes across mannish. Now... When you say to your wife, you're coming across managed, that cuts really deep. But I was like, what What do you mean? Yeah, what is and I was like, mean? oh, just the way yeah, I just said it like now? DMX. <laughs> I just said it like DMX. Oh, well, what do you mean? <laughs> you know? That comes, that comes across managed. But, when, you know, when I, I had committed to doing more listening than talking, and he explained to me that, 
you know, you can be soft. I'm here for you. You can be soft and you can be gentle. And, you know, you're not, don't fight me. You've had to fight the world. Don't fight me. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm on your team. And I, I do believe a lot of women, because we're out here fighting in the world for our place in life. We're out here fighting, you know, to be respected. We're fighting for the same salaries. We're fight. It's like, when do you look up and realize you're shadow boxing? Right. You know, right. you don't have to fight anymore. Mm-hmm. And I, I was able to sink into my femininity when I realized I was safe. Mm-hmm. You know? I love that. And one thing I'll say, because that is so true. I have this piece of art that I bought. I don't know if you guys, do you guys collect art? We do. We do. Okay, I want to talk about that some too. But um, <laughs> I have this piece of art that I bought, but the reason I bought it was it really spoke to me because it was like um, some boxing gloves and he's standing there and it's got like emojis on the boxing gloves. But anyway, it just reminds me that every day I was going outside, I felt like I had to fight every mm. single day, like mm-hmm. just to make it through the day. You know, things are way better now, but it definitely was something that I was like at that time, I was like, okay, let me get this. Because every time I look at it, I'm like, hurry, right, let's get ready right. to go outside and go fight. And it's nice to feel like you don't have to do that, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but so what color were your boxing gloves? Um, and that one, they were blue. They, they were blue. blue. I had some pink. It's funny that you say that. I asked. Didn't I have those pink boxing gloves? I have pink gloves? boxing gloves in real life at home. You do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in but, real life. But I had to take the box because we don't realize even some of the things around us are yeah. symbolic. Yeah. And how much they feed. The music we listen to, mm-hmm. even if we're like, no, like, it's, that's my joy. Mm-hmm. No, the music you listen to sometimes is a vibration mm-hmm. yeah. that can carry you into an aggressive state. Yep. You no, know? you're absolutely right. The, the, yeah. Everything, we're taking it in. So I had these boxing gloves that my office was right by the front door and they were hanging up there for years and I realized like how symbolic that was every time I went out I felt like I had to fight 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 and I don't, I don't want to fight anymore I just want to live a soft life yeah right? it's Take that the, soft girl era put them away hey. I, don't, I don't even know where they are I think Harper <laughs> has them or something now it's that's just fighting they're in the gym uh, and and then let's talk about the new show mm-hmm. on HGTV that you guys are going to be. Um, you're judging, right? Yes, Is it the bat- uh, oh, no, battle? Oh no, are you competing? Mountains. No, we're not competing. You're judging. We're judging. Okay. You're judging. Battle of the Mountains. Mm-hmm. Um, we competed on Rock the Block, right? But Battle of the Mountains, we're just coming in as judges. Le- no, uh, not just competed one. Let's just we won. yeah, we let's won. make sure. Okay, yes, yeah, we there won you Rock go. the Block. Yes, uh, <laughs> but Battle of the Mountains, we're just coming in uh, and we're judging. There are. There's one, two, three, three four, teams? four teams. Four teams. <laughs> yeah, it's three, three, three teams. teams. Um, it's, it's it happens in Colorado, mm-hmm. and Which it's actually gorgeous. really on the mountains. And each house is totally different, and they have. Well, I can't give too much away. Yeah, you can't get right. too Bottom line is it's a full-on brawl <laughs> on a mountain in Colorado, and it gets crazy, mm-hmm. and we judge it. And it, it is definitely one of the stronger competitions that you're going to see on HGTV, mm-hmm. since you say you love all that I stuff. do. I yes. watch all of that. <laughs> yes. And I, and so, you know, just to conclude this, I want to say that I love seeing you guys on HGTV because I feel like we need that representation. Yes. You know, you don't know who you're affecting just by seeing both of you on there, mm-hmm. seeing uh, black people, a black woman, a black man. Right doing the work and having shows on there because, you know, I don't feel like we see us in that space as much as we should. Yeah. So what does that tell us, too, that we've got to support and watch? Yeah. You know, if, if we want to see more, it's always going to boil down to numbers. It's mm-hmm. still a business game. Mm-hmm. So if you want to see more of us, if you want to see more Egypt and Mike, right. you got to actually show up yeah. and yeah. watch so the numbers show up. Yeah, you got to tell your aunties and your uncles and your cousins. You already tell got a choir, Golden Girls Club. Okay, to make sure <laughs> You might got to go to Florida so and promote. We have... Angela, we have uh, fans, not fans, right? Yeah, we don't and call them fans. I, I say that to say to speak to what you just said because we get approached a lot and it's never like a fandom on them craze. It's more of a family situation. Come here, let me give you a hug. Right. Right. And they'll pull us close and they say, listen, please keep doing what you're doing. Or uh, it's, hey, I just sat my son down to watch your show and he was enamored by what he saw. He saw himself in mm-hmm. your show. I was at a wedding and a young man approached me, he had to be about 25, and he goes, the one thing you may not know, because I'm sure people approach you a lot, is I look at you as a father figure, because I didn't have a father, and to see you with your Ooh. family and you know representing us well, please don't stop. And when you hear that stuff over and over again, you're like, we're doing it right. Let's continue to on this path, right? It's necessary. You sexy. Okay. Oh, that's twice. But Keep it up. These lights don't have no brace. You want to so go on a date? Relax. Y'all want to go on a date? No, Angela you know. got some stuff over there. Put it <laughs> no, in your you're kind of cute. I don't know. <laughs> well, I can't wait till 
HGTV does a show on brownstones in Brooklyn. Hey. hey. All right, Angela. You, we, we, we know that. <laughs> we understand. She got her real estate license. Uh-huh. She's about to do the daggone thing. She's buying properties. What do you, Which building do you want us to come renovate? <laughs> I might need y'all to come. Come you on. Know. We'll come do a special with you. I would love that in Detroit so these women can have an amazing mm-hmm. place to call home in Midtown in a landmark district. Has it broke ground yet? Yeah, no. It should be done hopefully in like June or July. Oh, so June they've been July. Working, yeah. So you've already started. We've already started. Um, they're doing the flooring right now. Mm-hmm. The yeah, I'll tell you about the issues. But other than that, though, everything has been um pretty smooth. So, okay. Awesome. Yeah. So awesome. right now on this day, mm-hmm. this moment in time, we're gonna mark it, y'all. <laughs> Angela Yee. Egypt and Mike are going to figure out a project to do together. Okay. And we're yeah. going to pitch it, and it's going to be on HGTV. I just I spoke it. it, so it shall be, right? All right, I'll pitch right after. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, Egypt, Sherrod, and Mike Jackson married to real estate. When does the new season start? December 28th, 9 oh, p.m. Yeah. on okay. HGTV every and Thursday stream on Max. Yep. Yeah, every Thursday. Perfect timing, because it's the holidays, yeah. and that's what that's we need gift to see. to you. All right. Well, thank you. And I'll definitely be watching. As you know, I already have been. So thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate it. 